How do you, you delicious people? I'm here today to review the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So, this was like an interesting thing to do because I've never in my life seen this movie until now. Like, I finally have seen the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And here's the thing though. So, like, I have heard certain songs being used in other kinds of things at some point. Uh, like, I, of course, end up hearing the Time Warp song. I think the Time Warp song was at some point used in, like, the Drew Carey show, I think, at some point. And also, I think the one song that Susan Sarandon is to have in this uh, movie... Uh, where it's like, touchy, touch, touch me, touch me, touch me, like that song. Like, I think I've heard that somewhere else, but I can't for the life of me think of where that's been used. But, like, I've heard of that song before. Like, it almost sounds like a, a weirdly, uh, like something similar to, uh, I, I know I, I can't quite place it. It's weird. So going into this film, going into the Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh, really there might be some stuff that people know in depth about the Rocky Horror Picture Show that I don't. Uh, really, I'm just going to have like fun reviewing this movie because uh, who knows if anybody really cares. Uh, I can really understand how this... Uh, movie was probably a play before it came a movie, and then the movie kind of continued on this to be a, uh, a theater thing or whichever, uh, but I would say that I had fun with this movie. I can say it's a really fascinating piece, and... There's some really good music in here. There's some. There's a lot of fun I'm, I had while watching it. It was like, oh my god! Like I, I. There was parts where I laughed during uh, parts of the songs or just kind of parts of the performances, uh, just because really, uh, especially that opening song, I couldn't help but like laugh during the opening song of this of this movie. Uh, going into this film, I really I had like an enjoyment kind of factor to it uh really to me like i had an enjoyment of it but i also didn't know like i didn't really probably understand this movie there were parts where i was like what is going on here <laughs> like i was like okay like okay this is like an interesting kind of approach to what they're doing here but like at some parts i was like what is even going on um but I thought the movie was fun. Uh, this movie has a fun factor, and a lot of people could just not like this movie because it's a certain kind of film, or it's to be just kind of too weird, too out there, or too whatever. And I don't know. Like, I would say that I was just, like, I thought this movie was interesting. Uh... Really, I don't think that there is anything negative to say besides, like, okay, there are parts where I probably just didn't understand. Like, there is some goofiness going on in this, uh, but I can also enjoy the goofiness. I can enjoy the visual aspect of this film, and I didn't have to, like, question my enjoyment. Uh, but there were some fun songs here that I really did actually like that I don't think that I've heard of. Um, I also really enjoyed the, the teddy bear song where they're to talk about, uh, Meatloaf's character who is to be Eddie and how like he didn't like his teddy and then he busted out a switchblade. Like I like that. That song was kind of cool. Uh, but people are probably to think me weird. So, like, in the order of probably music, I think I really, like, I think the two songs that I really enjoyed, uh, the most one was the opening uh, song because of just the, the consistent, uh, like, uh, thing of just entering that name 
uh, within the song. And then uh, the other one is the, the Teddy song, uh, the one about Eddie, uh, the guy who ends up playing Meatloaf in this movie, which, uh, like, I was kind of like, okay, so who was Eddie? Uh, like, that was a thing that I was trying to come up with of, like, who was Eddie? Like, he just seemed some random guy who just, like, made his way into this, uh, into this environment and then exited fairly and brutally, uh, quickly. But still, I was like, okay, but who is this character? But I would have assessed that maybe, uh, Eddie was the rough draft of whatever, uh, supposedly, uh, Dr. Frankenfurter was to try to accomplish, uh, in the early parts of his stay on Earth? <laughs> yeah, um, there might be some words where I might not go into here and I might not mention, uh, just to avoid, because I'm very unsure uh, what YouTube is going to do if I say certain specific kinds of magically delicious words. Uh, even though people will probably want to hear them, I may not want to say them. Uh, so look out for those when eventually I'm going to go into spoilers about this movie. So, uh, so where can you go to see this film right now? Evidently, it's like free on Amazon. If you guys have Amazon Prime right now, uh, you can watch this movie as much as you want to, because evidently it's on Amazon. Uh, but yeah, so check it out if you've never seen it before. Uh, and like, for me, like, I easily get won over by visuals, uh, besides like, what the heck else is going on. Uh, like, I liked how certain characters seemed to represent uh, certain kind of horror elements. And that's the thing that I liked about this movie, where we have certain characters that are to give us like a Dracula or a Frankenstein or a mummy or a, a, a maybe a zombie or something like that. Uh, and, like, we have certain characters that eventually change to seemingly look like a Frankenstein's bride at some point in this film. Uh, with just the, really the hairstyle, not the actual, like... So, like, these are to be familiar uh, things uh, taken from, of course, uh, like, familiar territories. So it's kind of... It's a mash of a lot of things uh, besides just being... Um, a rock and roll kind of opera kind of horror kind of thing. Like, it's also having, like, a mixture of also, like, science fiction in here also. Uh, so, yeah, there's kind of a mash and there's kind of a, a, a collaboration of a bunch of stuff with also some um, S.E. actual stuff going on. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I would say overall positive movie, uh, for really a person that is to have seen a number of just movies that eventually have some SEX stuff, but then like really just go like into a very dark, <laughs> a very dark way about doing things and a very brutal way about doing things. Like, it's just uh, kind of interesting to see this film for what, uh, like, kind of... I don't want to say odd, but, like, uh, I hope that I, like, say the word odd and it means something good here. Because uh, I want to say, like, with its odd, like, approach, but odd to me with talking about this is not a bad thing. Like, odd is just something uh, in this instance that I'm just not to not used to seeing every day uh, because I don't go out to, uh, to find this kind of thing every day and to see this kind of thing for once in 
who however knows how long that I've seen this kind of thing pre be presented to me uh, is really just interesting. So with that said, I've talked far too long about the cryptic like sense of this movie. Uh, so what are people going to be presented as a teeing up fashion to this film? Because maybe no one has ever seen it before. Somebody might be interested. They might be interested in my opinion about this movie for whatever reason. And if you watch this, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, or just be like, oh, yeah, he's probably just going <laughs> to he's probably just going to hate this movie. And what? no, like I thought that it was OK. Uh, like, of course, we get a lot of Susan Sarandon just basically just full lot like could God is Susan Sarandon in shape for this movie? Not only that, but, like, pretty much everybody's in shape. Even, like, Tim Curry, I'm like, good God, the man looks, like, so, like, muscular and skinny and, and whichever. And I'm just, like, really impressed by uh, a, a massive amount of people's physiques. Um, the guy that end up, ends up playing, like, Brad Majors in this movie, I'm like... I've seen him in Spin City as well as a number of other things. And it was kind of cool to see uh, kind of Barry, who ends up playing Brad in this uh, movie. Like, it was kind of uh, really interesting to see him because I'm like, does, like, I was thinking, I'm like, he looks so familiar. And I was trying to figure it out. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember him from Spin City. So, yeah. Um, plus, also, Tim Curry, I've seen him in It and Clue and any number of other things. So... Let's get into it. Let's, uh, so teeing up things. So, uh, it seems that we have these two lovebirds who have to forcibly, for one reason or another that I'll talk about more in spoilers, have to forcibly go and, uh, make it to this castle, ring the doorbell, and desperately ask these people for a phone, which... It seems that they consistently keep delaying uh, giving them this phone call to really just tell them, like, hey, how about you just spend the night? How about you just, <laughs> like, how about you just hang out a little longer? How about you just, uh, how about we just take off all of your clothes and just give you these, uh, like, these uh, doctor's coats because we know that you're very conservative people. And so then eventually they, uh, they try to open their minds a little bit more. They try to, uh, open up their bodies a little bit more also, uh, to experiment, to see, uh, if eventually they are to be, uh, swayed or, pers or persuaded to go into which of what, uh, Dr. Frankenfurter is to want them to do. Uh, kind of in almost a Dracula vampirish kind of way of just like, look into my eyes and then let's do this kind of thing. So, uh, like you can kind of say that honestly, Dr. Frankenfurter seems like Dracula to me in a lot of ways uh, with his powers of almost persu persuasion. But really, he's just kind of opening people up to just like, well, like, you've been to Leave it to Beaver for far too long, and now you need to uh, leave it to me uh, to open you up a little bit more because you're just this stiff uh, person that needs to loosen up. Uh, that's what I kind of can see this story eventually playing out to be. But people will have their own opinions, their own perspectives, and their own whichevers, which is perfectly fine. So, yeah. Because uh, I just wanted to just check this movie out. Because I'm like, I've never seen this movie in my life. Uh, I've heard the music before. But, like, I was just like, okay, let's see what this was. Uh, so. So, eventually, there is to be this kind of branching out of... Eventually, you have the word horror being used here. And, really, they don't disappoint. There is some... Uh, like, really visual representation that feels very fem... Fem? That wasn't the right word. Similar to, uh... To kind of, like, horror things that people are knowing and, and, and have knowledge of. People will be like, oh, that's a Frankenstein moment. That's the mummy moment. That's the... 
this that that kind of moment but uh we'll we'll just get there in spoilers eventually there is to be this scientist who ends up coming in to uh eventually figure out where eddie is and eventually that starts to play out an escalation of eventually this scientist getting to figure out things that uh dr frankenfurter is doing and so eventually it just starts to become this uh musical thing of sorts so let's go out of our way to go into spoilers uh i'm gonna probably try as much as possible to try to like quickly do this review uh because really i'm just gonna like uh there's a lot of there's a lot of music in here there's a lot of dance numbers uh and plus there's also just like uh, there's more, like, meat on the bones for some part of this story. So, let's get into it. So, very beginning of this movie, let's... Spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time I'm going to spoil this movie, so spoilers now. So, very beginning of this film, we have this wedding. And uh, so, of course, Janet and Brad aren't the ones getting married. It's to be someone else. So, uh... This bride is to otherwise go and chuck uh, the uh, the flowers behind her. And, of course, Janet is to catch uh, this bouquet. And so the groom of this wedding is going and talking to Brad. Like, hey, I guess you're next there, buddy. And so they end up running off and driving away. So all of a sudden that leaves both Janet and Brad kind of left. And so now all of a sudden, like, Brad is busting into song like, talking about how much uh, he uh, loves Janet and how, like, uh, like Janet, it, of course, is to reciprocate this. And so we end up having in the background, uh, like, these kind of, like, elder, older people that are just to consistently say whenever, uh, like, it kind of works in the rhyme. Uh, like, we have these other people that are like, Janet! <laughs> I don't think I can understand it, Janet. <laughs> I don't think I can stand it, Janet. <laughs> and I thought that that was so funny. Like, I was laughing during this whole, like, song, and I was like, I can't wait for it to be, like, Janet again, uh, just for the way of which that these people delivered it. And I was just having such a fun time in the very beginning of this movie because I was like, oh, my God, this song is funny. Um, I really liked the approach and having to fit that name in there, but having to fit it in in a kind of a eh, <laughs> kind of way. So I like that very beginning of the song, uh, pushing these two together to really uh, show that there's love between the two of them. So... We push on to have both Janet and Brad uh, both drive off uh, into the night. Uh, and coincidentally, while they're driving, all of a sudden there's to be uh, a tire that ends up blowing out. And so Brad is uh, going to go out on his own to try and uh, get someone to help him with this spare tire and janet is like well i'll go out there with you and brad is like well i wouldn't like i wouldn't want to put you out because really like we're both gonna get like uh just pouring down rain on and we're both gonna get pneumonia probably so like might as well just have me just go out and janet is like oh no because what if we uh are to go back to this castle that is nearby the road and Eventually, Brad, you were to see this woman that is to open this door and you were just to be lost in her eyes and you'll just be like, uh, like glued to her forever and, and whatever. So both Janet and Brad decide to go both to this castle. And so uh, Janet is to notice that there seems to be a bunch of motorcycles just going back and forth through this road. And Janet and Brad are to eventually notice that all the motorcycles are coming to this castle, weirdly. Because uh, it seems that all of these uh, kind of side people that are to be involved in this movie, I guess they just call them the Transylvanians. 
uh, they're just to be like stacked up and eventually do the the time warp song, uh, which comes up fairly early here. Uh, so eventually Janet and Brad just kind of ding dong the freaking door, uh, and so we have Riff Raff who ends up opening the 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 door and is like yes. <laughs> In only a way of which that I would think in my mind, I'm like, of course he used to answer the door like that, because that's how I would probably answer the door, just like, yes. <laughs> in the way of which that he would do it, yes. <laughs> so, uh, so of course Janet and Brad are to eventually mention their, uh, their spot that they are in, and so Riff Raff is just like, well, okay, yeah, like, Come on in, like if anything, uh, uh, if anything, like uh, my doctor uh, is putting on a show anyway, so you've kind of caught him at the, like the perfect time. So, uh, so eventually Janet and Brad end up coming in. Uh, they try to like, uh, kind of like brush them off as much as possible, uh, but they're still supposedly soaking wet. So. All of a sudden, uh, the time is to dong uh, onto this clock, and that's when we end up winding up into doing the Time Warp song, where uh, all of a sudden that uh, these characters are to now all be into this uh, elevator and to be put up to this one floor, where all of a sudden, like, Riff Raff and uh, uh, Mag magenta are to go ahead and be doing this time warp song and with all these transylvanians and so they're all like kind of doing the the hips on the and the the swirling and and the stuff like that in the left and the right and like i didn't realize that like the actual time warp song had like a certain dance to it uh but i guess when really seeing it in the drew carey show i guess that does make sense but i don't know i just didn't, I guess, put it together until now, because uh, I've never really seen this film. Also, it's really interesting at some points to have the narrator kind of either commingle with the song or to kind of help us understand parts of the story, I guess, where eventually the narrator is to kind of like tell us that like, okay, we're to focus on Janet Wise's character and Brad Majors. And like eventually he kind of comes in and helps out certain songs too, which I thought was interesting. So, uh, so after the time warp song is to be over, uh, then we of course have to usher in uh, Dr. Frankenfurter uh, with his almost vampire-like getup at first. And then he is to thrust off uh, his... Uh, cape of sorts to eventually do his own song about him uh uh of course being from uh, transylvania and like his own song let's just say uh because i don't know if a specific combination of words will affect this review uh because good god i don't know how many bullets that i've tried to dodge uh when going through and doing any number of youtube things so that f that garbage uh i don't like that at all i should be able to say what i want but brr, with youtube bah! anyways so dr frankenfurter does this really interesting song introducing himself and to really just show that this guy is going to be pushing people's buttons so to speak or really just like Loosening people up is to really be the whole pushing of the buttons kind of metaphor here. So, uh, so eventually we have these uh, characters who switch from their clothes uh, to these tidy whities and, and whatever. And then eventually they get onto seemingly another floor where uh, they are to be given these uh, doctor's coats. And it seems that Dr. Frankenfurter is to have this kind of, like, uh, like doctor-like outfit, weirdly. Uh, and so now they are all of a sudden to do this experiment that seems very, like, 
Dr. Frankenstein-ish, where uh, Riff Raff is all of a sudden, like, uh, pushing all these toggles and twisting all these things. And so, all of a sudden, there's to be this mummy seemingly in this waterish like tank. And so, they are to bring this mummy to life. And so, all of a sudden, they start pouring all these colors into the water. Uh, and eventually, they don't, like, electrify this thing, I guess, just pouring in all the colors into this thing all of a sudden, like, makes Rocky come to life. Uh, and all of a sudden, they end up starting to cut and tear all of his mummified bandages to have him just have this Speedo, this, like, golden Speedo, that all of a sudden, uh, we end up having, like, Doc Dr. Frankenfurter after uh, Rocky is to have this song about... Uh, him and uh the son of some like greek god like thing uh like something about that where he's to be underneath the son of something of some greek god <laughs> it was so weird uh but it, it was okay like uh but anyways so then we transition on to Dr. Frankenfurter, who is to eventually uh, do this song about making Rocky a man uh, within uh, seven days' time. And how Rocky is going to have to, like, lift weights and do all these, like, uh, acrobatics and, and whatever to eventually, uh, in a week, have... Uh, Dr. Frankenfurter make him a man. And so, so then all of a sudden, we have Dr. Frankenfurter who gets really close to, I guess, this uh, freezer. And all of a sudden, he ends up opening up this freezer to all of a sudden have meatloaf come flying out, which is kind of funny. What freezer, meatloaf. Uh, so all of a sudden, meatloaf comes flying out and this guy is to be Eddie. And he's on this motorcycle, and all of a sudden he has, like, this, like, gash on his head. And I'm like, this guy looks like a zombie to me, where he was, like, in this freezer, and I'm just trying to figure things out here. Like, who is Eddie? <laughs> this guy just comes out of nowhere. And, like, he's on his motorcycle, and he's talking about rock and roll. And all of a sudden, he's playing the saxophone like he's Bill Clinton. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> I thought this was so funny. But I also just enjoyed the song. But then all of a sudden, uh, like, Eddie is taking this motorcycle and just motorcycling it, like, all over this place. And just having, like, the Transylvanian people, like, be running for their lives because they're assuming that they're going to, like, crash into uh, Eddie or whatever. Uh, but if that's not goofy enough, we eventually have the... Uh, 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 Dr. Everett V. Scott, who is to be Eddie's father, then ends up making a bizarreish entrance on this... Uh, wheelchair where like he's going up these flight of stairs on wheelchair <laughs> and like and this guy is just going everywhere he's breaking through walls he's doing all this kind of stuff and I'm like what is going on <laughs> that was so hilarious but like it was also so like what is going on here uh especially when Dr. Everett is to appear uh, and supposedly Brad is to be familiar with Dr. Everett, but we'll get there. Uh, so, uh, so Eddie is to go and to play his song and it seems that immediately Eddie is to be, uh, having Columbia, um, attached to his hip. Because evidently Columbia really loves Eddie. But all of a sudden we have Dr. Frankenfurter that is to go and grab Eddie. And to chuck him back in the freezer. And just uh, 
just stab the crap out of him to where all of a sudden uh Frankenfurter comes out and he's just like, well, that was a mercy killing. And so all of a sudden, like, he ends up having the, the people grab these gloves. And because, like, Rocky is kind of like, ooh. And it's like, no, hey, that was a mercy killing. So, so pushing on. So eventually what ends up happening is that everyone is to rest up for the night uh rocky is to uh eventually go and be like handcuffed to one like part of this room because heaven forbid he ends up uh getting loose uh which eventually he does because eventually uh riffraff uh forces him to get loose by uh, putting a, a candlelight near his face to where all of a sudden he is to break out of his chains to eventually kind of uh, climb his way down this ladder thing and eventually go out at night and be chased by these dogs. Because uh, Dr. Frankenfurter is going off and messing uh, with both Janet and Brad because both of them uh, desperately need to get a, a loosening, so to speak, because Dr. Frankenfurter... Um, is to eventually go to Janet first as Brad, which I thought was really interesting. And so then all of a sudden, uh, Dr. Frankfurt is like, yes, it's me. And like <laughs> Janet's like, no, it can't be you. It's like, yes, it's me. And then uh, there's to be this spot where um, like Janet is just to give in to Dr. Frankenfurter and they go at it. And... Then so all of a sudden, because uh, we're assuming that this was actually Brad, and then we got confused. But then all of a sudden, once Janet is to desperately go to Brad and be like, oh my god, I don't think I can handle this place, and whatever. Like, we end up finding out that it's Dr. Frankenfurter again as Janet. And so eventually Dr. Frankenfurter is trying to please Brad, and I'm just like, this is hilarious like you were thinking like you were kind of cut off guard and then you're like wait a minute it's dr frankenfurter um so uh so all of a sudden we have riff raff who's to tell uh frankenfurter that hey man like freaking uh, uh rocky's on the loose we set the dogs out for him and so Dr. Frankenfurter is on it and is going uh, to uh, collect Rocky. And so what eventually happens after that is after that one pleasurous night where uh, Janet was trying to desperately uh, tell Frankenfurter, like, hey, don't tell Brad about this. And then all of a sudden Janet is to see that Brad has maybe succumbed to um, to this also uh eventually i think uh frankenfurter and brad eventually spot the doctor and then they go and they get him and they take him um and eventually they bring him in uh to have eventually like a birthday and dinner and everything and so uh, and so all of a sudden, Janet, while they are to be gone, Janet is to just be like, oh, my God, like, I can't, like, now that I've had this moment of bliss, like, I want more. Like, I want to be, uh, of course, more pleased. And so all of a sudden, she busts in this song of, like, uh, of wanting to, like, be a creature of the night and eventually to be uh, touched and teased and, and whatever. And the only person that she is to be able to do that with is to be Rocky, uh, who of course should not be the one that she should be doing this with, but she cannot control this. So all of a sudden, both Janet and Rocky are to be in this tank and they are just going at it. And so eventually Dr. Frankenfurter spots them doing this and is outraged because 
uh, Rock, because Frankenfurter thought the Rocky was going to be left to him, but it seems that uh, Rocky probably had too much of Eddie's brain inside of him from, I guess, the cut above this guy's head. So maybe uh, uh, Frankenfurter took some brain out of out of Eddie and put it into Rocky, I guess. So eventually what, end, what ends up playing out is that uh, they all end up going to dinner uh, to have this turkey. And so everyone's getting one piece and like Rocky is just grabbing it like a caveman is like, ah, rah. and so like somebody goes like, hey, freaking use your utensils. So he uses his utensils. And so that's when uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Scott is to uh, eventually, uh, eventually mention about like, well, hey, like, uh, where is Eddie? Like, I, uh, I need to talk to him. Uh, and then uh, Dr. Scott ends up busting out the uh, the Teddy and the Switchblade song, uh, which I really like. Because um, eventually it's like, uh, for a purse, uh, a guy that, or for a kid that doesn't like his Teddy, uh, is not like the normal kid. Uh, but when he busts out a, a switchblade, uh, you better get rid of him or something like that. Or some, like, I don't know the, I don't know the lyrics, uh, like really by heart, but I was like, I remember bits and pieces about the song, but eventually I'll probably go back and replay and like, yeah, like, like I, I know about the Teddy and the switchblade thing. But anyways, uh, I, I like that song. It was a good song. Um. So everybody just got really into it. They're like, they're going into the song and like singing it uh, to the point where I think even the narrator is getting into bits and pieces of it. And so we also have Columbia that is just at a loss with like just kind of mourning the loss of Eddie to where she is to leave uh, during dinner to just kind of mourn the loss of Eddie and to have a big massive picture of him. Uh, on her wall, and so, uh, eventually how this is to play off further is that eventually, uh, Frankenfurter is to be upset with Janet, and now he finally wants to deal with her, and... So Frankenfurter is to all of a sudden go into the top floor and is to uh, have all of a sudden Janet now stuck to the ground where she can't move her feet. And then all of a sudden, Dr. Scott is to realize like, oh my God, like uh, if anything, the work that me and Brad have done, like it seems that Dr. Frankenfurter had figured out a way to perfect this. And also Dr. Scott had realized that um, it seems that there is something very alien here, um, which eventually they end up finding out that uh, that these people are to eventually go back to their home planet uh, and so on and so forth by especially the end of this whole thing. So, uh, so all of a sudden... Every single one of these characters, uh, Dr. Scott, Brad, Janet, uh, even uh, Columbia, all are to eventually, or, and also Rocky, are to all turn into the statues and then just weirdly appear all onto this stage and... So they're now all like singing it out about this kind of this part of song and you end up seeing like Brad and Janet and, and everybody like having this makeup and I was like, okay, this is really interesting. Uh, and so eventually this kind of like finishes up with like Frankenfurter end up kind of doing this uh, like also being a part of this song. So all of a sudden now uh 
magenta and riffraff are to seemingly change their look and to look very much uh, like alien or astronaut like. And so now, like, Riffraff is to tell Frankenfurter that's like, hey, we need now to go back to our home planet. And so, like, and so now, like, because uh, you have failed your mission, you have obviously failed your mission. And so now we're going home. And so all of a sudden, that's when uh, Dr. Frankenfurter bust in a song it's like well i'm coming home and like just start singing this song about him coming home and riff raff is like no i don't think you understand like if anything i'm going to kill you right here now hence why i have the gun out <laughs> i'm going to kill you and seemingly kill anyone that is like attached to this uh kind of like that has been technically attached to Franken uh, Frankenfurter. So, with the exclusion of Doctor Scott, uh, Brad, and Janet, because they're human beings. So, uh, so eventually, one by one, he ends up starting to shoot uh, all these people, and they end up dying right away. With the exclusion of Rocky, like Rocky is to consistently just like, hold on to, uh, Frankenfurter, and, like, and so, uh, uh, Riff Raff keeps shooting him numerous times over, and so then Rocky pulls this, like, King Kong maneuver, where he's to climb onto the, the Empire State Building thing, and then they fall over into the pool, and... So both Rocky and obviously uh, Frankenfurter are to be dead. Uh, so Riff Raff is telling all the humans like, hey, you guys got to get the heck out of here uh, because this castle and everything in it is eventually going to take off to go back to our home planet. And so... Uh, Brad and Janet and eventually Dr. Scott get the heck out of there. And eventually they have like one song after this uh, where like I was just kind of confused about the whole like real ending of all this. But, uh, but eventually after this moment, we have the narrator kind of wrapping everything up and... Like, you would have thought that these people would have gone back to business as usual, but that never really happened. And plus, also, like, these people never got to call anybody for their spare tires. So they did all of this uh, just to just be still stuck where they were. Um, plus, also, now they're in those kind of clothes, having to go and, <laughs> and having to, like, figure out where's the next place to eventually get a ride. Uh, but maybe there was a motorcycle that was to be left over, so that way they can probably use that. I don't know. But really, that's just the way that this movie was to eventually play out. Uh, if there's something that I missed, or if there's something that I kind of rushed through, I apologize. Uh, I know there's probably some people that know this movie by heart. Uh, there's certain theaters or certain kind of things that would have specific kind of showings that would garner people to all of a sudden um, have to do specific things during this movie. Uh, like, there is to be the one spot where uh, where Frankenfurter tosses his drink, and, like, I think there's a lot of people that end up doing, like, a number of things during the showing of this movie, where I think some people are to eventually like throw like pieces of toast and all kinds of stuff like i've seen those kind of performances of this movie um but yeah so uh oh there was also be the one interesting spot where eventually the guy in the wheelchair ends up all of a sudden having these like fishnet stockings and he's like kind of can canning it he's like swinging his legs up in the air 
and I thought that that was kind of funny too. Uh, like, because of course it would be. Because uh, this guy is to try to hold on to his, like, rationality kind of thing, but then all of a sudden he ends up kind of just kicking his legs in the air because uh, he was trying to hold on to, like, his beliefs or whatever, but uh, he ended up just letting them go to go and swing his legs. Uh... But yeah, so this movie is kind of interesting, but uh, maybe I didn't quite understand all of it, so that's bound to happen. But uh, I had a good enough fun time, so hopefully people are interested in this review, or it'll be another one of those again, or people may not care. Uh, really, my whole thing about this is if nobody's interested in it now, someone will probably eventually be interested in this eventually. So uh, that's where I'm kind of banking on this movie to uh, eventually be an interesting enough thing for someone to review at some point. Maybe not 100% uh, all the way watching it, but meh. So I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was anything that I forgot about. I don't think so. Uh, I don't feel so. So I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.